Well everyone, hope you're well. Thank you for, for logging in if you're here with me live or if you're tuning in later. Thank you for, for logging into the practice. So this morning we'll be at Foundation Hatha. That's our kind of beginner friendly, beginner accessible practice. There'll be a few challenges dialed in between the practice just to help you to keep engaged and focused in the practice, but always remembering no pressure, no force. We'll come in step by step so you can come in as far as you're comfortable. If you ever feel like you've gone too far, come back a step and we'll work from there. So to begin, you can be in any seated position, if a seated position is comfortable for you. So your legs can be out to any varying degree, hand support as you need to, sitting up on something, if that perhaps that helps. But you can also be in a lying down position. If you feel that it's challenging or uncomfortable to maintain a seated position, lying down is also a if you're in a seated position, perhaps you'd like to adopt the mudra, so a hand gesture, which helps us to cultivate a little bit of focus, a little bit of awareness. So perhaps you can bring your thumb and the next finger together, and you can allow your hands rest closer to your knees. So just mindful you're not holding up your hands to any degree. If this is uncomfortable for you, you can leave your hands rest as is necessary. Sit as tall as you can, if you are seated. If you're lying down, adjust the body. No matter where you are, eyes closed and a mouth closed. As you just give yourself a few moments to really land and to arrive. And as you work towards creating a little space for yourself and space for your practice, and know that you're not trying to suppress, you're not trying to resist any thought. Instead, you're just encouraging a gentle shift of your awareness, of your attention. So you bring your awareness to your physical body for a moment. Notice how the body feels. If there's any areas that you're familiar where you habitually hold tension, be there for a moment longer. Similar inquiry into the condition of the mind. Is the mind busy? Is it calm? Is it settled? Is it occupied with things outside of the room? And with this attuned awareness, we softly bring our attention, bring our focus upon the breath. And the intention is to simply witness and to experience the breath without trying to create. As you allow your awareness to rest at the very tip of the nose. And you know the sensation. Sensation for the inhale. The sensation for the exhale. Once you experience the inhale, Mentally repeat, breathing in. On the turn of the breath, breathing out. Breathing in. Breathing out. Continue with this awareness for a few moments. mind begins to wander, don't fight it, be patient, each time, recognize where it's gone, then back to the breath, breathing in, breathing out, breathing in,
Simon Stone would dress. It fits Comfortfield. Perhaps a likely price is brought to the chest. Does he take a moment to set an intention, a sankalpa, or a dedication for your practice? Release your hand. Chin towards the chest. A few gentle blinks or blink of the eyes. Namaste. We'll softly raise the knees up. If you're in a seated position, please do come, or a lying down position, please do come to a seated position, taking care as you come up. Crossing the legs over as best you can. Knees come high, thighs in towards your chest. If this is a challenge here, hands behind as you need to. A little practice your thighs, then your shins. If it's good, go for a wrist or a forearm. Sit as tall as you can. Really lift your spine. Gaze as front, setting the chin a little back. And we'll settle into the breath. If you haven't already done so, lengthening the breath in and out through the nose. With no pressure, no force. All is well here. Keeping the chin set a little back. Turn the gaze to your right. One more five. Maintain the gaze around mid level. If you look down, the head lock and tilt. Keep the neck long. Breathe. Back through the center. And to your left. Back to the center. Release the clasp of the hands. Extend your legs out in front. With the legs extended out in front, allow the feet to drop out to the either side. Then bring the soles of the feet together. So the heels and the balls of the feet and the pads of the toes. We'll take the hands behind us. Quite a good distance behind you. You can lean away into the hands. But as you lean into the hands, you're not collapsing through the spine. Keep the spine lifting, the shoulders are rolled open. If this is comfortable for you here, light movement through the hips. So it will be the knees dropping up and down, dictating the pace and the rhythm that's best for you. No force, no fight. Breath flows. Softly come to rest with the movement. Pausing for even just a brief moment perhaps. If it's comfortable for you here, bring your heels in halfway towards the ground. Now the closer the heels come towards the groin, the more challenge that's presented. So choose a depth that's a bit best for you. Still good, returning to the movement, releasing the knees up and down. It can be a slower, steadier movement, or perhaps there's a little faster rhythm to it. The breath flows. Softly come to rest with the movement. If it's comfortable for you, begin to walk your hands towards you. So the intention is bringing your hands, the heel of the palm close to the bottom muscles, the forearms almost pressing against the middle back, so the shoulders are almost over the hip. A few are as necessary before this point. If this is good, slide the right leg a little further front, then the knees drive towards each other. And then you can tuck a heel underneath the shin bone or a calf muscle. Adopting any variation of a cross leg position that's accessible for you, that's best for you. We're going to get a little twisted. As you get twisted, you want to keep the spine nice and centered and twist from there. Take your right hand to your right side behind. Thinking a little closer, if you go too far away, you lean. A little closer if you can. Hook the left hand over the right thigh. As you inhale, sit as tall as you can. As you exhale, get a little twisted to your right. Very comfortable to gaze follow. Inhale, smooth your back to center. Exhale to your left. Left hand, left side and behind. Hook the right hand over. Inhale, center, exhale, right. Inhale, center, exhale, left. Take the time to coordinate. Inhale, center, exhale, right. As it feels good, be there for a moment. Maintain into the right. Exhale to your left. Maintain it there. Feels good. The gaze also follows. But don't 
1.3 for that, and I would say each side can be different. Inhale back to center, slowly return. We're going to come front. You're welcome to come front whichever way is necessary for you. For instance, you could sweep your legs around to the side. If comfortable, you're playing around and it's successful, raise your knees, heels a little closer. Take the hands front, then raise tall on the knees and unravel the legs. But don't fall. Come front whichever way is necessary for you. All coming on front at all fours, your hands in your knees. Take a moment to set up. So the initial intention is shoulder directly over the wrist with the fingers well spread. If this angle presents a challenge for your wrists, your hands can be as front as you need to. A little practice working back. If required, you could also make fists. Have a look at your knees. So your knees come underneath your hip initially, so you know your thighs are vertical. Then you can take your knees wider from that point. So the setup will be the wrist, the knees and the toes, top of the feet grounded, working in a straight line. Fingers spread. Once you've got your good alignment, we're going to begin to make circles through the whole of the torso. So the shoulders and the hips are moving together. We'll start with smaller rotations. You're just inquiring into the body's reaction. As you go back, the reaction in your hip, outer and inner, the reaction in the knee as you come front, the reaction in your wrist, reaction in your shoulder, reaction to shoulder blade. If all is beginning to respond well, you can begin to make the circles a little bigger. Can you keep the palms firmly grounded as you make the rotations, particularly if you move away from the hand? And then change direction, start with smaller circles, each side being different. And if it feels good after a few rotations, you can begin to make the diameter of the circle a little greater. Completing your current rotation, shoulder back over wrist as best you can. Drop your head down, look in between your knees, have your feet, have your big toes drifted together, if so, if it's comfortable and accessible for you, the feet come back apart, your toes maintain alignment with the knees. We'll endeavour to maintain that alignment, also we'll endeavour to maintain the hands in the position area. On your next exhale, bend with the knee. The eventual tension is sitting all the way back, but you can be anywhere before that, don't fight the ankle, the knee or the hip. As you inhale, move with the breath, shoulder back over your as you exhale, pushing back, coordinate the breath. Inhale, raising up. Exhale, pushing back. Inhale, raising up. Feels good, we'll maintain here for a moment. We'll work a little through the wrist to the shoulder, if you have any challenge in this area, please work a little easier, please work with care. Working with your right hand initially, raise the right hand up. Then start to turn the fingers towards the outer edge of the mat. Now you can stop at any point along the way. The eventual intention is the fingers pointing back toward the knee, tips of fingers, base of fingers and heel of palm grounded. Recognize where the right shoulder is. Is it up the ear? Can you draw the shoulder blade down the back, which draws the shoulder away from you? Now you're welcome to work with one hand at a time. So if necessary, bring back the right. If comfortable, however, you can welcome the left. But not fighting for equal depth. Stop at any point as you bring the fingers around. And each practice can be different. Focusing on the reaction in the front of the wrist, where the shoulders, both shoulders draw down the back. Breathe. Welcoming back the left, and if the right is still there, welcoming back the right also. Endeavour to keep the toes in line with the knees, we'll bend at the knee, sitting back, the intention is sitting all the way back if you go forward if required. We'll welcome the forearm, the elbow to come to the mat, flip the palm, and if it's comfortable for your neck, just for three steady breaths, release the head. And then 
this recommends the reaction in response to the palms of the hands, the wrist, the forearm, bicep, shoulder. And if you release the head, just gently raise you, re-raising even the head. Flipping the palms back over, really spread the fingers. Straighten the arm and raise back up on the hands and the knees. You're coming back to that alignment. Our shoulder over wrist are working towards it, and the knees are as wide as the wrist and toes are length the knees also. A few gentle rounds of our tiger breathing. As we work, we'll endeavour to maintain the shoulder over the wrist to maximise the movement through the spine. The head is the last thing to move. As you inhale, drop the belly, so arch through your lower back. Middle back, upper back, then lifting up the head. Head is last thing to release as you exhale around the lower back. Middle back, upper back, then release the head rounding of the spine. Head is last thing to raise as you inhale, arch your lower back. Breathe as much as you need to if you can coordinate your middle back, your upper back. Lift the chest through, then raising of the head. Head is last thing to release as you exhale, lower back. Take the time. Middle back, upper back, release the head, draw the belly. Inhale, arch. Exhale, round. Inhale, arch. Exhale, round. Be there for a moment. Be very comfortable maintaining the rounding. Note that your shoulder is still over your wrist. You're lightly pushing away the mat. Belly softly drawn. Head is early. Steady breath. Next inhale back to an easy spine. So allow the belly to drop a touch. Gaze is front. Take the knees wider. As best as you can working your knees to be as wide as your mat. Slide the big toes together. And sitting back. Sitting on the heels if you can. But being higher if necessary. The first variation with the arms is to walk the hands as far front as you can without raising up the hip and then forehead to the mat. If this presents a challenge, perhaps you stack your palms or you stack your fists and your forehead can rest here also. Then be here for a moment. If your hands are stretched out in front, you're lightly pushing away the mat. softly lift the head. Now know that you're welcome to remain here and you can work from this point but if all is well the intention of making way to a mild downward facing dog. We'll come up step by step so choose the step and the variation that's appropriate for you. We'll maintain the distance between the hands and the feet as you raise your hip up. If this is good take your feet to be wider so shoulder distance apart, take the toes under Still good to raise the knee, all is well. Keep it better than the knee, push your hip up and back. So the torso is working back towards the thigh. We'll maintain the gaze straight down. Being a mild foot downward facing dog, your intention is focusing on spreading the palms, spreading the fingers even, grounding the palms entirely. And the whole of the torso working back towards the thigh. A long and steady breath. With no pressure or force, you can grow the knee at any moment. From here, our intention is to explore an effortless forward fold. If that presents a challenge for you from a downward facing dog, please ground your knee, come to standing whichever way is required, and then explore a forward fold from top down. If it feels good, however, keep the feet where they are, bend the knees a little further, begin to walk the hands back towards your feet, bending the knees generously as you come back. Choosing a depth that's best for you. So if your hands come with ease to the mat, perhaps they rest there, but they bear no weight. All of the weight is in your feet. If your hands are up off your mat, that's beautiful work too. If there's any challenge in the back of the body, if there's any dizziness present, have your hands on your thighs, torso parallel or even higher and don't release your head. If all is well, you can fold deeply. And as you fold, the head is released, the arms are released. 
Recognize the alignment of the knee to the ankle. Often the knees will be tracking towards the toes and the toes will be pinned down. Can you lean back to the point where the knee is over the ankle? And you can lift the toe. Neck is free. This is good. Maintain the bend of the knee. Arms and head are heavy. Head is going to be the last thing to raise. As you inhale, roll up just for your lower back. Arms still heavy. Exploring your middle back. To see that there's still a bend in the knee. Upper back. Still a mild bend in the knee. And the head is going to be the very last thing to lift. Remember, you take your time as you come up. If you come up too quickly, you can get dizzy. Once you're up and you're feeling steady, We'll bring the feet at hip distance apart. So if you look at the centre of the thighs, draw a line straight down there is the centre of your ankles. Your toes are pointing straight ahead. The hands will come onto the hips. Your awareness and your gaze comes into your toes if you feel steady. A beloved toe movements as you raise all of your toes up off the mat. Then grounding your toes. Raising your toes. Grounding your toes. Raising all of your toes. As best you can, we'll endeavour to maintain all of the toes up, but we'll welcome just the big toes to ground. But as you ground the big toes, can you keep the outer edge of the foot grounded? Big toes raise. Big toes ground. Big toes raise. We'll keep the big toes up. But welcome the second to little toe to ground. Can you keep the ball of the foot grounding now? Second to little toe raise. Second to little toe ground. Second to little toe raise. We'll welcome the big toes back to ground. And the little toes back to ground. And as best you can, your three lads in between remain lifting. But don't fight for it. Working at one foot at a time if necessary. Then grounding all of your toes, your knees a little soft. Feet wider. So you're thinking shoulder distance apart, but toes pointing straight ahead. Recognize if your feet habitually turn out, whether you're in the yoga practice or not. Encourage them to come back to the center leg. Hands on the hips, recognize the straight line that runs across the hip. And soft hip glide. Pushing into the outer hip with slower, more intentional movement. Next time you push your hips to your right, be there. Recognize the reaction of the right outer hip. Check in through the legs, are you bending at the knees, can they maintain straight? To your left, glide to your left. Be there for a moment, void leg working a little straighter. Breath still flows. Back to centre. Maintain the alignment of the feet, but we'll release the hands. So your hands are going to come to rest on the sides of the thighs. The intention is keeping the hands on the side of the thighs. You're trying to prevent the hands coming front or the hands coming back. And also trying to prevent the bending at the elbow. Working with the arms relatively straight. Gaze is front. Chin sets a little back. Your next inhale, retract your shoulders back. Elevate your shoulders up. As you exhale, front and down. Inhale, shoulders back and up. Exhale, front and down. Inhale back and up. Exhale front and down. Pause there for a moment as you inhale, elevate up from that point. As you exhale, retract back and down. Inhale front and up. Exhale back and down. Inhale front and up. Exhale back and down. Shoulders free. Hands come onto the hips. If very comfortable, however, take the hands behind. Go for a clasp with the opposite wrist, forearm, or elbow. The gaze is front. Chin sets a little back. Just moving through the head and the neck. So keep the shoulders steady. As you turn your gaze to your right. Notice that the shoulders don't come along. They remain facing front. To your left. But how slow and steady can you move? Slower than you think. Back to centre. Lift your chin. Ah, can we lift your chin towards the ceiling? With no pressure on the back of the neck. Chin to chest. Back. 
at the center, in the front, chin set a little back, right ear, right shoulder, but no pressure on the right side of the neck, never moving the pain, no tension. Center, left, not the difference between both sides. Back to center. Release the hands. Hands over to either side. Perhaps the face around. Have a medium bend in the elbows. Grab an imaginary glass, a bottle of something, and endeavor to pour that vessel all the way up behind you. And we'll maintain it here. We'll exaggerate a double chin. We'll draw the chin back towards the neck. Notice it's not chin towards the chest. Straight back. The arm bit back. Then glide your face front into your phone, into a text neck. Turn it all the way out. Double chin. Text neck. Turn it all the way out. Pour out at the same time. And double chin. Use the chin come a little front. And release the hands. Shoulders free. Come to Tadasana. So our mountain pose. Feet together. Face is a big toes to touch and heels to touch. If this is uncomfortable for you, little laces between the feet. But toes always pointing straight ahead. All is well, bring your feet together. Hands coming to rest to the sides of the body, heads, shoulders thrown open, gaze is front, chin is set, little back, not all the way to a double chin, just a little back, your welcoming ear, back over shoulder. Be here for a moment. Now, Tadasana, the mountain pose, the initial intention is at the feet, this is your first foundation, share the weight evenly, all directions. Second foundation is Base of pelvis, a light drawing up action, just below the navel will become a little active. Breathe. Now, if this is good, we'll endeavour to maintain the alignment of Tadasana, so that initial alignment. We'll move from the shoulder upwards. As you inhale, take your arms over to the side, shoulder height, flip your palms. Still good, arm in line with the ear, palms are lightly pressing gaze into the thumb. If there's a challenge in the shoulders, arms as low as you need to and don't fight the gaze upward. Next exhale, release the hands out to the side, gaze return center, shoulder height with the palms to face down. You're thinking bottom of your breath, hands to thighs, so as best you can coordinate the movement. Inhale, raise, shoulder height with the palms, arm in line with the ear, gaze at the thumb if it feels good. Exhale, release. Inhale, raise it. Exhale, release. Inhale, raise. Shoulder height with the palms. Arm in line with the ear. Palms to press. Lightly gaze towards the thumb, be there for a moment, but don't fight to maintain, arms as low as you need to, have the awareness in your feet for a moment, how are you sharing the weight, start them with a little back, breathe. Next exhale, release out to the side, shoulder high, flip the palm to face front, bring the hands together. If this presents a challenge for you, please do take rest at any moment, not fighting to keep the arms up. Your next inhale, open up your arms, expand your chest. Recognize as you can take your hands behind your shoulder and that you're not trusting your ribs to achieve this. Keep the ribs a little back. Your next exhale through the center. Palms back together. Think bottom of your breath, hands just returning to touch. Inhale, open up the arms, expand your chest. Exhale, center. Inhale, open up the arms, expand the chest. Exhale, how slow and steady can you move as you come back to center. Inhale, open it up. I'm going to bring the fingertips in line with the shoulder, so as best you can, not behind, not behind even. Then this is good, we're going to move from the shoulder. Think of moving from your bicep. The hands will flip, but as best you can, Moving from the bicep, the bicep's turning in opposite direction. If you've any challenge in the shoulder, work a little easier. If this does create pinching, 
Please do play around with dropping the arms a little lower, turning the bicep from here. If this is still creating pinching or discomfort, perhaps you bring the hands a little further front and you work from this point. But think biceps moving and as best you can, opposite direction. Completing your current row, palms to face front, bring the hands out in front, flip the palms to face down, so fingers in line with the shoulder. This is good, take your feet to be shoulder distance apart, so a good distance, about a good bend in the knee also. The intention is back bending forward folding, if you have any challenge in the back of the body, please work a little easier, very mindful of the depth you fold front, any dizziness likewise, take care of the pace and the depth you fold front, but maintain a bend in the knees throughout. As you inhale, raise your arms. The intention is in line with your ears, but you can be before it. If this feels good, talk the pelvis asunder. Push the hip front, but the knees remain bent. Your next exhale, push the bum a little back if you're seeking a high chair. Hinge front from the hip. Good bend in the knee. Stretching forward to a depth that's comfortable for you. Swing the arms back and release the head if comfortable for the shoulders. As you inhale, a good bend in the knee. Arms in line with the ear. Feel the work of all the way up. Gentle back. Exhale, falling front. Inhale, raising up. Exhale, working front. Inhale. Exhale, no dizziness. Choose a depth that's best for you. Inhale, raising up, keep the bend of the knee as you push the hip. Exhale, work in front. Inhale, through the nose. Exhale, through the nose. Inhale, really slow down as you come up. Good bend of the knee, push through the feet. Feel the mark as you come up. Keep the bend of the knee, tuck the pelvis a little, then gentle back bend. You'll be here for a moment if you can. If you have any challenge in the back of the body whatsoever, any challenge in the neck, please just stand nice and tall. And you can play around keeping your arms extended up. If it feels good, just for two more breaths. Good bend in the knee, tuck the pelvis, be there for a moment. And breathe. Notice the response in the front of the body, particularly with each exhale. One more breath. Inhale, stand in. Really extend it. On the exhale, release the hands if you have the space, you can release out to the side. Coming back to Tadasana for a brief moment, feet together, toes and heels to touch, hands to the sides of the body. Where you look, the body follows the gaze front, chin is set a little back. And just notice how you're sharing the weight now, has it differed to the start of your practice? We'll turn to the long edge of your mat. So as best you can, turn it towards the long edging of your mat. We'll set the feet a good distance apart. Shorter distance is welcome. But as best you can, building towards three and a half to four foot, which is quite a generous distance. You're thinking the back of your heels are in line and your feet are parallel, or you can also equally gauge it off the front of the toe. Your hands are on your hips. This is good here. We'll keep the heels where they are, but turn the left toes in slightly. The right heel also remains where it is, but you raise the front of the foot, pivot on the heel and turn your right toes all the way up towards the back edge or front edge of your mat, whichever way you're facing. And wrap your left hip around. Square the hip and square the shoulder. Initially, you would endeavour to maintain this heel to heel alignment, but just playing around will take the right foot a little wider. So heel toe the right foot up towards the right edge of the mat. But make sure once you arrive that the heels and the toes are in a straight line. And see if you can draw your left hip around a little further. Perhaps a little easier to square. You can have your hands on your hips, but if it feels good, you can take behind, opposite wrist, forearm or elbow. Take an inhale. As you exhale, we're going to fold front. The intention as you fold front is keeping your hips squaring as if you're almost upright, and fold to the point where there's almost even weight in the feet. If you feel like there's a lot of work in the right leg, come back up a little, share more with the left. You're working towards a straighter right leg. And never fully locking out the knee if necessary, mind back. Breathe. Super. Next.
exhale, come all the way back. We'll stay facing in this direction. Releasing the hands to the hips. If this is good here, put a very mild bend in your right knee. Just very subtle initially. If you're familiar with the practice and the posture of Virabhadrasana A, the warrior one, you can bend the knee to where it comes over the ankle. If your knee goes beyond my knees, perhaps you consider scooching your right foot even further front. So before or over. The hips are square. You can remain as you are with the hands on the hips. Feels good for your shoulders. Perhaps you can play around extending your arms out in front. This is accessible. Arms in line with the ears, the palms depressed. And be here for a moment. That even weight between both feet. A lot of work in the right leg. And choose to bend the knee. Share the weight more with the left. Breathe. Exhale, release the hands. Hands to the hip. Straighten the right leg. Turn the feet back to parallel and step that right foot back to where the heels come in line. Turn your left, your right toes in a little up. Pivot on the left heel, left toes out. You're swearing your right hip towards the back of your mat. Heel toe your left foot a little close towards the left edging of your mat. So you go wider base. Maybe it's a little steadier for the balance and also square the hip is probably perhaps a little more accessible. Hands on the hips or play around with taking the hands behind. Opposite wrist form or elbow, take an inhale. As you exhale, fold front. Any depth being welcome. We're aware that each side can be different. And fighting for depth. Share weight evenly. If necessary, come back up. Share weight more with the rest. Next inhale, coming back up. Maintain focus and squaring towards the back of the mat. Releasing the hands to the hips, mild bend in the left knee, you feel steady and comfortable bending the knee towards over the ankle, but you can be before it if necessary, scooch left foot further front, feels good for the shoulders, extend the arms straight ahead, all is well, arm in line with the ear, palms depressed, square the hip, almost even with the feet, breathe. Exhale, release the hands, hands to the hips, straighten the left leg, feet back to parallel, the heels come in line, then step and walk your feet back together, whichever variation is best for you. We'll come towards the front of the mat, coming about a foot distance or so, maybe a little more from the front of the mat, feet shoulder distance apart, playing around with our straight leg forward fold, any challenge to the back of the body, take care of the depth you come in. If it's very challenging this morning, maintain a bend in the knee. Little practice, straighter legs. The hands will brace in the thigh. Push the bottom a little back. So you'll notice that your hip will be now behind your heel. And it'll encourage hinge front from the hip. As you work front, the first intention is straighter legs. Then the second intention is a lengthening lumbar spine. Maybe even my back through the lower back. Work to the point that legs will be maintained straight. And the lumbar spine will be maintained lengthened. We'll just be here for a brief moment. The hands are taking weight on the thigh, so there's no pressure on your knee. Breathe. Super. Put a mild bend in the knees, or bend the knees as much as you need to even. To stretch the fingertips to the mat, maybe even the palms, and you're taking your front of your feet, so that should be almost shoulder distance apart. And this feels good. Keeping the feet in this lining, walk the feet a good distance towards the back of the mat, coming into the downward facing dog. If a downward facing dog is challenging, you can ground the knee, you can play around with being an arresting warrior perhaps. So it feels good, no point in your shoulders, working towards being up, and bending the knees to lessen the intensity, sharing the weight a little even, more evenly as best you can. A long and steady breath. Your next exhale, bring your knees to the mat as wide as your mat if you can. Big toes together, maybe the intention is sitting back on the heels, extending your arms as far front as you can, forehead to the mat. But you're aware, you can stack your, fat, your palms, you can stack your fists, your forehead can rest here, the hips can be higher if required. 
be there for a moment. All is well here, raising the head, try to maintain sitting back on the heel or maintain the distance that your buttock muscles are from the heel. Walk or slide your hands to your right. Any depth doing well, come then release and welcome the forehead to the mat, if comfortable on the right side. And then raising the head. Walk, slide or glide your hands to your left. Without raising the hip up and relocating the forehead to the left side. Raising the head, walking the hands back to centre. We'll keep the head elevated, walking the hands a little back towards you, and then raising up in the hands and the knees, and bring the knees together. Now the intention here is stepping one foot front at a time. We'll work with the right leg initially. You can use any variation. It may be one smooth step. You set the right foot front, but if necessary, set the right foot off to the side. Then a healthy hand can get it all the way there. The intention is your right knee is over the ankle. If your knee has gone beyond, please do as best you can. Scoop to the right foot further front. If there's any challenge in the left knee here, any sensitivity, you can double over your mat. You can be as you are. You can take rest if necessary, but if all is well, right hand to right thigh. Left hand to right side. We're coming up, sitting standing tall. As best you can, we'll bring our awareness into our left hip. If I drew a line straight up, my left hip will hit the mat. I want this leg to hit the knee. So backing the hip up, the right leg may straighten. So right, the left hip is over the knee. Hips are squaring, so it's a straight line across, and there's a slight tuck of the pelvis. If this is a challenge for your balance here, you can take the right foot out to be as wide as you need for to stay with the balance. Slight tuck of the pelvis and a gentle push front. You're endeavouring to maintain that knee or hip over knee alignment and the reaction we experience perhaps in front of the left hip and down into the thigh. I'll be there for a moment, but don't fight. Now well, softly stretch front, hands either side of the right foot, and whichever way is necessary for you, perhaps a scooch or a slide back, bring the right knee back to meet the left, and whichever way is required, you can step the left foot to the side, bring the left foot all the way front, knee over the ankle, if it goes beyond, scooch it further front, right knee is grounded, toes on top, you can double over the mat if there's any sensitivity in the right knee now, one hand at a time, you raise up and you place the hands on the left thigh, if required for balance, the left foot can go a little wider, it's wider of stable base, Square the hip, first perhaps you can grab, draw back the right hip towards over the knee, then square the hip, then a slight tuck of the pelvis, then a gentle push front, a very small distance, keeping a slight tuck of the pelvis and pushing front, just to the point there's a reaction in the front of the hip. Breath flow. Softly stretch front, sliding the left foot back to meet the right. All is well here, the knees together. Perhaps you want to take the feet a little wider apart, and the knees come apart also. We'll endeavour to maintain the shoulder over the wrist, just playing around with your practice. You can stretch the right leg back, recognize that your shoulders are still over the wrist. This is good, you stretch the left leg back. Notice the shoulder is still over the wrist, you're not pushing the hip up and back. Straight line, heave the head, just playing around the plank pose for a very brief moment. If this creates a challenge for you, Ground the knees, build your practice from here. A little further practice, zero. Only one more breath, that's just six seconds. Very nice, like said. If you haven't already done so, ground your knees, squeeze your elbows close, come down whichever way is necessary. If you're playing around, it's comfortable. Thighs, belly, chest, chin. 
One super rally, untuck your toes, feet together, toes and heels to touch. Slide your hands back so your hands are either side of the chest, elbows up towards the ceiling. A few gentle rounds of Bhujangasana, the cobra pose. As you inhale, roll your shoulders, raise your head and raise your chest. Note that you're not using your hands to push up. Lower body's out. Exhale. Inhale, raise head, raise the chest. Exhale. Inhale, raise head, raise the chest. Be there for a moment if you can. But note that there's no pressure on your neck. Any discomfort on the neck, drop the chin. Lower body is active, so base of pelvic, buttock muscles slightly engaged. Breathe. Exhale, coming down. Pressurizing the hands lightly into the mat. Please do take care through the lower back. As you push back, we're going to bend at the knees. Sitting back on the heels if you can. You can be before if required. We're we'll welcome the elbows to the ground, bring the heel and the palm together and you can create a face, perhaps around the chin. If this is a challenge, you can drop your gaze downward, leave the head tilted a little forward, or maybe you're cradling around the temple. If necessary, stack palm or stack fist to support the head. Just a few steady breaths. Raise the head slightly and release the hands. Raise the elbows so the arms straight. Raise the bum up a little so you can tuck the toes. Then sitting back on the heels again. Recognize for the next posture, just playing around with many variations. This is just the first option. Walking your hands back towards you, allow your, your knees to raise. Big toe together and the heel together. And you're balancing almost in the front of the foot. If this creates a challenge for you here on your ankle or your knee or your hip, Please don't force to be here. You can equally build your practice by having the face in a seated position with the feet together and drawing your chest through. It's the same shape, just a little less demanding when gravity is not fully involved. And you can be here for a moment, whether you're in a seated position or you're balancing. The intention perhaps is bringing the heels to the ground if the structure of the ankles would eventually allow it. You can use the upper body as a little counterbalance to stretch front. This is any challenge in the neck, drop the chin a little, just work with turning your gaze front. Be here for a moment. Now this is good. Lift the head, the gaze is front if you've dropped it any degree. Now I know many of you are probably familiar with where we're going. If this feels good, it can be a tiny hop. Very confident it could be a big hop. If that's a challenge, you can scooch front. Whichever way is best for you, you can hop all the way to the front of your mat. So smoothly hop front. And whichever way is best, it could be tiny hops, it could be big hops. Come all the way to the front of your mat. Once you've arrived at the front of your mat, if you are in a position where you're still on your toes, you can play around with releasing back. But if you notice the bum is a little high off the ground, please ground your knees. And come to the ground whichever way is best. If you're not too high, and there's no solid objects directly behind you, extend your arms front. As you inhale, come to a seated position. Once you've come to the ground, allow the right foot to come a little front. The knees work towards each other. Tuck the heels underneath the shin bones of the calf muscles, or any variation of a cross-legged position. Keeping the spine centered, your right hand, to your right side and behind, hook the left hand over the thigh. As you inhale, sit as tall as you can. As you exhale, get a little twisted. Twist through the torso and then the gaze forward. Maintain it there for a moment. Next inhale, coming halfway back, 
We'll keep the hands in the position they're in if you can. If you're thinking the breastbone centre of the chest is looking at the right knee. As you exhale, roll in the direction of the right knee. We're not trying to roll into it, so we're keeping the left side of the buttock muscle ground. Inhale, raising back up. Softly through the center, left hand, left side behind, hook the right hand over. Inhale, sit tall, exhale, get a little twisted. No fight for depth. Inhale, coming halfway back, looking at the left knee now. Maintain hands in the position they're in, fold in the direction of the left knee. Keep the gaze beyond the knee. Right side in the bottom muscle grounded. Inhale, coming back. Through the centre, we'll take the hands behind. Fingers pointing away from you. Take the hands a good distance behind you, leaning away from the hip. All is well here. Roll the shoulders. Smoothly begin to lift and arch. Lift the chest as best you can, but we'll drop the chin towards the chest, so not releasing the head back. chest, in the ribs, the side of the body as you lengthen the breath, the chest expanded. And softly allow the chest to drop. Walk the hands close to the back towards it. Now you can maintain as you are with hand support in this position. This is beautiful work in itself. If comfortable, however, take your hands to be in front of the shin, in front of the knees, maybe take fingertips initially. As you inhale, lengthen the spine, sit as tall as you can. As you exhale, you think pelvis tilts, work from the hip, smoothly fold front. And continue with this rhythm. Each inhale is a little length, each exhale a little length. Inhale length, exhale length. Work as you hear, working forward even, to your comfortable point. Staying a little active through base of pelvis, lower belly. Each exhale a little deeper. Keeping the gaze a little front if you look down or back. You tend to round, no matter what degree you're at the phone in front, maintain the gaze a little front. Breathe. Next inhale, walk your hands back towards you. Take the time as you raise up, lift the spine. Allow the knees to go a little wider, unraveling the feet. Bring the soles of the feet together, heels as close to the ground as comfortable, it can be further away to lessen the intensity or the depth of the posture. Hands behind you. Spine is lifted if you can, shoulder over the hip, but hands can be walked further away if required. So just like the start of your practice, a few rounds of butterfly movement. Where is the spine? Can you lengthen? Shoulders just a little roll. So after come to rest with the movement, if you walk your hands behind you to any degree, you can walk your hands a little closer. Then do a little hand support, raising the knees up, extending the legs straight up in front. This feels good here, initially taking your feet, taking your legs to be as wide as your mat. If you have any challenge in the back of the body, current or previous, strictly the lower back, perhaps this is the depth you're at. And if necessary, you could also bend your knee and you can just work with slight twisting. If both these variations are accessible for you and all as well through the back of the body. Your feet can go as wide as will allow, the space that you have will allow and as comfortable for the body. Recognize the feet. Do they drop out? Can you have the toes pointing towards the ceiling and the heels pushing away? Hands to the side and behind initially, spine is lifted. The intention is getting a little twisted, folding in the direction of each leg. We'll move with the breath. Take an inhale. As you exhale, we're going to turn slightly to your right. 
Your right hand can be the outside of the right leg, so this helps you to push back to centre. Your left hand can reach for the right thigh, the shin, the ankle or the foot. We recognise that the left buttock muscle isn't really. The left side of the bum is grounded. As you inhale back to centre, exhale to your left. Left hand to the side, helping push centre. Inhale back. Exhale right. Inhale back. Exhale left. Inhale back. Exhale right. Inhale back. Exhale left. Coordinate as best you can. Inhale back. Exhale right. And be there for a moment. Focus completely on your right big toe. Not forcing or jerking for that front. A long and even steady breath. Inhale back, exhale left. Focus now on your left big toe. Use the left hand to push you back to centre. Breathe. Little hand support underneath the knees, having to put a bend in the knees, bring the soles of the feet or the edges of the feet together, allow the knees to be rather high. If you're near any solid objects, please do scooch away from those solid objects, come more towards the middle of your mat. The middle finger, index and thumb grabs the big toes. If this is a challenge, maybe you're more in the arches of your, or towards the ankle or the lower shin. Palms of face, lift your spine, focus on the point a little upward. If you're comfortable and familiar, jump straight in. If necessary, you can play around with alternating one foot at a time and you can hold these alternated lifts for a period of time as comfortable for you. A little practice, feet come a quarter of a millimetre above the mat. Then little, little, once you come to a certain point, stretching one leg and then stretch the other leg. Be there and breathe. Focus on the point in front of you. If you roll back, that's all good too. Just mind that there's no solid objects, but, uh, uh, solid even objects behind you. Breathe, breathing makes you light. One last breath. Super. Bringing the feet together, keeping them elevated if you can. If you may challenge the back of the body, please just softly come onto your back. Fall as well, release the big toes, chin to the chest as you inhale. Back. Coming onto your back, once you've arrived, a little rolling. Just a slight rock into a roll. Coming to rest with your rolling. And release the clasp of the hands. Welcome the knees to the ground. Or welcome the feet to the ground even. As wide as your shoulders, a good distance. Maintain the bend of the knees. Slide your heels in towards your fingertips so your hands are out over the sides of the body. The chin is in a mild double chin, so you have that length of the spine. Push the feet into the mat. As you inhale, as you push the feet, the hips will raise. Lower back, middle back, upper back. Exhale, releasing down, upper, middle, lower. Inhale, pressure it, feet engage, the lower body smoothly push the hips. Exhale, release. Inhale, push the hips. Lower, mid, upper. If it's very comfortable maintaining here for a moment, but please do be aware if you're maintaining, there's no fight in your neck, there's no challenge in your hip to lower back, there's no stress, stress even, or pressure on your knees. You can always continue with movement, you can also take rest at any moment. All is well you're here. Awareness in the feet. How are you sharing your weight? Share it evenly as best you can.
Exhale, release, upper, middle, lower back. Once you're grounded, feet together. Extend your left leg straight, right knee remains bent, and draw your right thigh in towards the chest. The left hand can grab the right leg. If you have the space next to you, extend your right arm straight, palm faces down, finger to shoulder in line if necessary, as I'm a little restricted with a wall here. The adopting cactus arm, so a 90 degree arm as best you can with the elbow in line with the shoulder. Your next exhale, draw your knee to your right, your right knee rather, to your left side. Come through for the neck, gaze to your right. So your knee goes to your left and your gaze to your right. Focus on grounding the back of right shoulder. Maintain it there for a moment, get nice and twisted. Inhale back to center. On the exhale, left knee to meet the right. Grabbing both legs, come through for the neck, head towards the knee, rounding the spine. On inhale, ground the head and the shoulders. Keep the left leg close now as you extend the right leg straight. The right hand supports the left leg. Left arm, shoulder height, straight arm, palm faces down. Cactus arm, the palm will face up. As you exhale, draw the left leg over towards the right side of the body now. Gaze to your left of comfort for the neck. If this is a challenge, maintain the gaze up. Breathe. Inhale, center. On the exhale, right knee to the left. Grab the legs, head towards the knees, around to the spine, nice tight. And as you inhale, release the head. Release the legs. Release and rest. The end of your practice. As you come to Shavasana, choose a position that is best for you. Any lying down position is welcome. I will maintain or remain even in a seated position. But I encourage you to be in the lying down position. Any blankets or coverings are welcome. You can be flat on your back. Knees bent as required. If this is a challenge, being on your side, being on your front is always welcome. Readjust the body. Eyes closed. Mouth low. As you come to the end of your practice, what would it take to be completely effortless, both in physical body and mind? What would that look like? Where would that be? And when you've made all the necessary adjustments, you can feel that body is beginning to arrive. All of the movement is beginning to subside. Welcome stillness. Allow stillness to rise up from the earth beneath you, to move through your skin, to be greeted by your muscles, your bones, your joints. Allow stillness to take up residence deep down in the nervous system. Allow it to hold the body. And within this holding, Know that you've done enough. There's nothing more required of you. End of your practice. There's nowhere you need to be. There's nothing you need to do. Nobody to please or answer to. By being here in this very moment is more than enough. And within this allowing, within this freedom, which is at the heart of your yoga nidra, your yoga sleep, Set your attention free to move upon the breath. On the inhale, perhaps the breath travels up the front of the body. And on the exhale, it descends down the back. Inhaling up the front and exhaling down the back. And 
perhaps in the next inhale the breath changes direction, inhaling up the back and exhaling on the front, inhaling up the back, exhaling on the front. exhale, just as the breath is about to descend down the front of the body, allow your awareness to continue to move the breath. At each point that's visited by your awareness, become aware of sensations. What arises out of the stillness at the forehead, the ears, eyes, nose, tongue, jaw, chin, the whole of the face, through the neck, collarbone, shoulder, elbow, wrist, finger, any sensation through the chest, the ribs, through the belly, welcome the release of any unnecessary holding at the belly. Through the shoulder blades, through the spine, through the upper back, middle, the lower back, stretching across the back of the hips. Become aware of sensations, what arises through the whole of the pelvic region, through the thighs. Knees, shin bones and the calf muscles, through the ankles, soles of the feet, tops of feet, tips of toes, as you become aware of the whole body, the whole body, the whole body. In this whole body awareness, we welcome the even deeper essence of stillness to be experienced. A stillness in which exists and which resides through authentic rest. The whole of the body is still. The whole of the body is rested. The whole of the body is still. Whole of body is rested. Just be with this rest for a moment. still, whole of body is rested. As you allow the body to remain within this position of deep rest, so softly extend your awareness to beyond the body. As your awareness extends beyond, allow it to transition to a more everyday, a more engaged awareness. Allowing this engaged awareness to influence the breath into being a little fuller, a little more conscious. Feel how the breath awakens the body. It awakens and stirs the body at the toes, little ripple of movement. Fingers, similar ripple of movement up into the head and neck. Chin roll, shoulder to shoulder. As the feet come softly back together, extending both arms up overhead and behind, beginning with the feet, point the toes and the feet, head the legs, take a big inhale, belly, shoulder, fingers, tongue, let it go, body. Exhale, release. Right arm extended, left hand to the belly, folding the left knee, 
Gently roll to your right. With closed eyes, coming out to your right side for a moment. And once you feel steady, a little hand support, pushing up to any seated variation. Cross the leg in position if comfortable, spine lifted as best you can, eyes closed. And as you come to the end of your practice, just allow yourself a moment to note any difference at a start. Physical body or mind. Draw the palms together. Gently rub the palms, generate some heat. Oh, welcome back to the nervous system. Placing the hands over the eyes, gently cup. And light the furs in the eyes, the nose, the cheekbone, the temple. Taking the hands a small distance away from the eyes. And gently blink the eyes open, gazing to the palms. Namaste. Thank you all so much. I hope you enjoy. I hope you have a good day. I look forward to connecting with you and seeing you at the next practice. Thank you.